Hey guys, we're back. Uh, Team Strike Force 5 Plus Aubrey. Uh, we got Corey, Matt, and myself, Brian, here. A um, few things I wanted to go over real quick. We're going to change up how we do our podcast a little bit. Hopefully, shorter episodes, um, more frequent, uh, a little bit more specific topics. Um, we're going to see how that goes. Before we get started on, on what we want to talk about tonight, um, I wanted to bring up... Uh, we just heard that there's going to be some news on HC Realms, some big news about 2017 Rock. So if, in case you guys are listening to this tonight, if I get it up, or maybe tomorrow morning, or you just don't pay attention to Realms, there should be some cool information by the time you uh, listen to this podcast. Go over to hcrealms.com, check that out. Hopefully there's some good news. Um, we also wanted to give a, a, a quick shout out to Chip Barnett for suggesting um, some topics for our podcast about maps. Um, right? Yeah. Yeah. Um, we really encourage people to do this, guys, because we can come up with topics, but it's our topics. It's what we want to talk about. It's not necessarily what you guys want to hear. Um, so sometimes we need a little bit of help um, going beyond our bias and hearing about maps, well, why a map, certain map is good, why it isn't, um, stuff like that. Um, we're going to try and add it into some of our later podcasts, um, stuff like that. Uh, what else was there? Uh, Damien... I can't pronounce his last name. Pan Shuck? Panook? Hey, there's no N. It's P A C U K. Cook. Yeah. Um, and if you're in like the Critical Clicks uh, Facebook group or the it's like international trade group, he's the guy that's been doing all the player card reviews. Like for example, his says Damian P. Years active, fourteen. Favorite character, Sugar Man, and he's a casual player. And he doesn't like really personalize too. Like for mine, uh, he did it with Big Barda. He put Strike Force Five on the card too. Like, and they're really solid. And <clears throat> the he's reason, doing it for free. Yeah, he's doing it just because he even, likes it. <laughs> even uh, one of the guys was like, "Hey, can I hook you up for doing some of this?" He's like, "Nah, man. <laughs> I just like doing them." Yeah. And he's like, "And I enjoyed the feedback." And I think these are awesome. Because I've never, I've always kind of thought about something like this, but I lack the technical skill to do it. <laughs> and they just look sick. Well, Everyone he's done has looked sick. That was kind of funny because you and me had talked about doing some sort of ID card that we could show people like that, like that looked like a hero clicks card. And then he starts doing this, and it's just badass. I want to send mine to Cyborgosaur and just start handing them out to people. <laughs> right. I'd really like. Really I really hope right? Patrick gets one, and when Patrick gets his. He does chameleon on it, but they do like the sculpt from the figure he designed, so he's like on his own player card. <laughs> oh, that'd be, that'd be kind of cool. Just a rendering of his face in the mirror. Right, like, yeah, no. It's, yeah, that'd be cool. Yeah. Um, so before we get started um, on tonight's actual topic, again, we have a Strike Force 5 page up. Uh, we try and post on there quite often. Sometimes we have previews of pieces. We put a lot of. Um, uh, what ifs out there? Um, if we have tournaments, I try and put our builds, how we're doing, what we're building, using, what's winning. Um, we put a lot of questions up there. What ifs? You know, favorite prime, worst prime, you know, stuff like that. So, um, we're constantly checking it. Um, it's really cool. Um, for all our subscribers, thank you. I constantly get the email updates every single time we get a new one, so that's super cool. Um, I'm glad you guys are watching our stuff. Um, so with that said, tonight uh, for this episode. We want to talk about um, a little bit of speculation into the future of HeroClix, um, some generalized topics, um, kind of maybe uh, keywords that they're bringing back or we thought were dead but they're, they're using. We want to talk a little bit about where resources are going, where we think they might be going, um, stuff we, we like and may want to keep, whether or not team bases might be coming back, um, what's with all the vehicles and the resources, stuff like that. Yeah, because like uh, the release of the Arrow Pack, Kind of remind me of like the Streets of Gotham packs, or like you brought the Avengers packs, right? The team packs, yeah, yeah. Whereas like the Streets of Gotham one, I think it was like you got two or three characters in a vehicle. Well, you got two characters in a vehicle. Yeah, that's yeah. right. That's right. Yeah, and it's just like, and that's what's cool about the Arrow pack because it very much reminds me of that. I yeah. like that concept. Um, you know, I I miss the smaller vehicles. Like I know we had had them in a. Avengers Assemble, mm -hmm. but they weren't the same as like the they GCP uh, motorbike, yeah, right. the cop motorbike or the Bat Cycle. Like I feel like those ones were way better. The Robin Cycle kind of sucked, but 
it's still I'd rather run that than like Kang's timeshare probably. Right. Well, it's just like when I first started playing clicks, um, you had so many options of what you could buy. You had super boosters, you had all these things you could buy. Um, and now it's just like, do you want to buy a gravity feed or do you want to buy a five man booster? And it's just, it'd be cool if they brought variety into like, you know, like we were saying earlier, bring back a generic vehicles and put them into super boosters so you could buy them. Right. You know? I, I'm glad that they kind of steered away from the gravity feed with a five booster set because I feel like a lot of the people. Gravity feed doesn't sell. No, it doesn't. Nope. It sits on the shelf mm -hmm. and everybody cherry picks for like, one character like that green arrow out of the trinity war one or they just go online and buy one yeah it's always like one character and a generic that's good yeah, yeah. and sometimes a generic thing so. right yeah. having the way they did tmnt and all that with it is yeah super no. solid yeah like yeah. the flash one i think had like one cop in there that you really yeah. liked and then the rest of them you were and way wasn't better the science police officer for slosh in the gravity Not the, there was but it wasn't the one okay the good one was in the five mans okay yeah, yeah. Yeah. So, so yeah, I mean, that'd be, I, I, I agree. Uh, not just con exclusives, but maybe bring back, you know, team boosters, a little bit more variety to buy, um, more vehicles, stuff like that. Well, it's interesting when you run up the super boosters, because, like, I think it was, like, Giant Size X-Men, they had the super boosters for those. Right. But then they even had just regular retail versions of it. Right. Where it's like, if you really want an apocalypse, you can just buy one. Yep, which I did. That was yeah. one of the first ones I bought. Right. Or the Sentinel. Yep. like The Mark Fives. Yeah. yeah, and that was cool because it's like you don't have to wonder always what you're getting. You know exactly what you're getting on those. Right. Um, yeah, I've always hated blind super boosters. Yeah. Right? That you have no idea what you're getting, and it's a high uh, cost. Yeah, right? 40, you know, 40 bucks or whatever. Yeah, right. to, to have no idea what you're getting in one booster, right. Right? it's kind of At least with the <laughs> Superman <laughs> Wonder Woman ones. They were all colossal retaliators, so right. I mean, the worst one you'd end up with was Titano. Yeah. Right. But even then, there was still things you could do with him and make him work. Like, right. but like you end up with, and don't get me wrong, I wouldn't mind this, but like if you ended up with two master molds, like, and you weren't a master mold fan, you could get rid then of you're one. like, yeah, you could get rid of one. Well, but I mean, let's, let's not joke. Who right. isn't a master mold fan? I'm just, <laughs> he was just the first one that came to mind. Right. I mean, Giganto was the worst one. Oh, yeah. I mean, and then it's like you're stuck. I still wanted Zero on the tester. So. Well, yeah, well, yeah, you just like colossal. I do. Yeah. That's true. So, I mean, do we hope? I mean, you two, you two probably have the widest. I mean, you've been playing a lot longer than he has, a lot longer than us, and you've been barely playing. I mean, Aubrey's barely yeah. Been right. Yeah. So, I mean, what are your opinions? Like, it's, I want more vehicles. Vehicles are awesome. Right. They're definitely something I would run. Um, I mean, do you want them in the five man boosters, or would you like to see? So you went around for the. Maybe we'll go up to Gabby's one of these times, and we'll see if she still has them. I think she's pretty much sold out. What you used to be able to, uh, the choices in the way they package things. You yeah. Know? I don't. Th I don't think I've ever seen any team like packs that. stuff like that that used to be a yeah, thing. Yeah. I I started just right after Guardians of the Galaxy red handed out. So. Right. One thing I will say, I really hope they start bringing back a little bit more, and that's maps and fast forces. Yeah, agreed. That, Some of the special objects aren't bad, but I was really upset with the Spider Man one because you got the card, but you really didn't get a marker for it. Right. You just right, a special web marker or whatever. Not only that, if you're a new player starting. And you don't really comfortable like I was. It took me a really long time to go to a tournament because I didn't. I wanted to be fresh on the rules. I didn't want to go in there and just mess shit up. But if you're just starting out, really the only way, unless it's a starter set, which is far and few between right now, right. the and only way to get a map marble. is to go to an OP and yeah. and place. You know, right. most places are giving them first, second, third, or whatever. Maybe you can get lucky and he'll give you one. But that's really unless you want to go online and buy them. The only way you can get maps. Yeah, and that's kind of kind of not good. In or my spend opinion. twenty five bucks on a premium map, right. which, granted, some of them are worth it. And like, if you're a casual player, I mean, you're probably like, you get one that you really like, and you know you're happy with it. But right. if you're more competitive, like being a competitive player, even if I don't run every map, I like to have as many maps as possible right. in case I sit down and someone busts out like the parking garage from the Whiz Kids map. Like, I'd like to know a little bit about it, right. you know? Well, what if they did this as well, like, and took a book out of uh, what Rock has done, is Rock, they have the premium maps, 
Oh, and then they release them on paper. Oh, with, pack. The, with the grid reality. Wiz, yeah. Right. WizKids yeah. could do the same thing, you know, maybe for a month or two have just their premium and then bring out $30 map pack that has four paper maps in it of those premium maps or, or something. They need a better way to get maps. Oh, yeah. yeah. <laughs> I just don't know why they don't sell like a, a map pack just like that. Yeah. Individual, right. even yeah. an individual map. Because they I even did it, it with effects markers. And yeah, like, they did it with the effects markers. Yeah, and you don't you don't have to have those effects markers for any reason. Right. Yeah. Um, I kind of I kind of do miss the old um, like uh, the Green Lantern for like barrier those special terrain ones, but just because they fit in the square a little bit better than the right. terrain the new ones the effects markers because they're just a little bit wider than the square. Yeah, and that's you're placing multiple of them that can get yeah. right. Maybe, we'll, maybe after I buy a 3D printer, we'll just start 3D printing That'd be some. cool to 3D print some up that yeah. just looked like a brick wall. Right. That'd be solid. One right of the on. guys I played in Lacey had 3D objects that he made himself. And they were so cool. Yeah. One was like a dumpster. One was a phone booth, like old yeah. school phone booth yeah. like the TARDIS. The, the first yeah. rock tournament I went to. And a bunch I, of them. I cannot remember the guy's name, but he ran like Spider-Man 70. Family. Uh, yeah, and he was the last guy I played in Swiss, and he ran like three D objects. He goes, he goes, I can put down the cardboard yellow ringed objects, but like this one's light, this one's heavy, this one's heavy. It was like the gym of Cryotech or whatever, and they're pretty cool. But what made it cool was the fact that he could uh, use that as the objects, right? And that's what I like about it. All right, I had to pause it real quick because uh, my door knocked, and we were just, as we were just saying, ripping really good on that one, but we'll come back and do this because we don't like to edit things. We just go from beginning to end. Um, what well, were we talking about? Um, having the 3D objects. Okay. Like, Aubrey brought up <clears throat> the guy with the 3 or who had the specially made 3D objects. I think it adds a more active feel to the game, having the 3D objects. That's like fun. I'll, you know, the rock tokens are cool too. Like they're easy to do, and they change it up a little bit too. But I really do like the 3D objects. Yeah. Like to me, that's kind of where it's at. And I've always liked the idea of having a 3D map right. and stuff like that. I know it'd be like a pain, yeah. line of fire wise. Right. In tournament wise, it'd be almost impossible to really pull off very well. Yeah. But for casual play. I think it makes it a lot funner. Right. Have you ever played on a 3D map? Um, Kinda. but yeah, my cousin Cameron, when he got me into the game, he uh, we did we drew our own map. We added a pit, a lake, and he had uh, boxes that he made to be elevation. Right. And whoever was when we did Bower Al style, whoever was the last two players, they got to place the buildings. Oh, yeah. So the map kind of changed every time. Yeah. The, the shop I used to go to, they had one uh, custom built. It was like four feet by four feet. And this thing was massive. It, it cost about six hundred dollars just to ship it. There. Oh. So, yeah, but um, all the buildings were detailed and everything. It was like like looking at Warhammer stuff, how detailed their stuff right, was. Right. It, it was a detailed miniature sized thing of Gotham. Yeah. Oh, that'd be so sweet. Yeah. Yeah. It had a working bat signal. Oh. It was sweet. That would be because there's these YouTube videos that I was watching for a while, and I follow them on Instagram too. It's little plastic superheroes, I right. think is their name, and they do like a kumite, and so it's like they build game theme teams and do a tournament with them and make them fight each other, and they always play on a 3D map. Oh, that's so. Crazy. And it looks like really cool. streets, and it's pretty awesome. It changes your entire perspective on right. the game. The way you look at everything it is kind of a little wonky, but. It it adds so much flavor to it. Yeah, like, and when you're and like when you're doing it for casual and fun and like doing stuff like that, especially for YouTube, like it looks so much better. Like <clears throat> it'd be cool if we had like a really elaborate one as well, and maybe down the road we will. But right, no, yeah, it's solid. That would be um, so <sighs> team bases. I mean, we still have, what, we have two viable ones, well, I, won't, I wouldn't call them viable, two legal ones for Modern. We uh, have Spider-Man, Amazing Friends, and the Trinity, or not Trinity, but, um, yeah, Trinity of Sins. Yeah. Um, do we think, I mean, 
Steam bases are. I mean, are they gone? You think I, WizKids messed up and they're just like, no, we I, don't want to do this anymore. I think. Or how ridiculous! I think team on. bases when they made them, they overpowered them, and then they tried to reel them back. And just didn't but work. even with the zombie team base, like was I mean, look what Scott Crampton did with it. You know, yeah. like I mean. I don't want to say they're dead, but they're definitely endangered. Like, right. I I just don't see them making another one. Because I don't want them to bring up the problems of the past again. Right. They're That's dead. true. You think so? They're, yeah. dead. they're not coming back. Yeah, yeah. I have to agree with Corey. It, as much yeah, as yeah. they had to reel those back in, as much problem as they had with them, right. they're never coming back. Right. Right. I'd kind of like to see them do something smaller, maybe on a peanut. And I had talked about this a okay, while ago. Your when, dream? <laughs> yeah, my dream, you know, where you could, even with generics, pop them on, like, in, onto a, a little peanut base, and they can hold, like, three on there, and they get powers and stuff. Kind of like a mini team base, but not not so overly AKA bloated. Avengers Prime. Again. Yeah, basically. Oh, I love Avengers Prime. I'm surprised they never did. <laughs> Justice or Justice League Trinity, and that's what I put on our Strike Force Five yeah, page. Like, yeah. I'd be totally tight if they did that. Yeah, I know. Or like a Shield Strike team, and put you know. No, I'm sh I'm shocked they have it, but at the same time, like, I think Avengers Prime was kind of like the only one they're ever gonna do like that. Yeah, right? it yeah. was really cool though. So overpowered. I mean, <laughs> yeah, that's <laughs> ridiculous. I think vehicles and resources stand a far better chance in the future of Hero Clicks right. than team bases ever will. Right, and that's that's a pretty good segue into that into resources because the last real resources um, that we got were the round tables. Yeah. Uh, people are still using the Justice League Trinity War ones, not so much as the Rock of Eternity as uh, the box. Um, but we're getting close to rotation. Um, box is going to go bye bye. Box is gone, leaving us. You know the teleporter. Um, and then a lot of the ID cards are gone. We're still probably, if they hold true, going to keep the uh, World's Finest cards and the exclusives. Oh, yeah. Um, um, but we didn't have a new resource in this last OP. Do you no. think they might do one this next summer? Do we? I mean, there's a lot of vehicles coming out with resources. Yeah, because Age of Ultron's rotating as well. Yes. It's possible. With the release date that they have, it's Kind of in a gray area. Yeah, well, going with what they did last year, they'll, they'll stagger it. Yeah, and I feel like that will make what Nick Nick Fury Agents of S.H.I.E.L.D. go. That's is the, it going to go? That's the one that, to me, that's on the Does cusp. it need to go? Yes. Will it go? <laughs> Who knows? No, it's I keeping think, a lot of things in check. I think the where the cutoff is, is at Age of Ultron. You think so? Yeah, what? I think the cutoff is Age of Ultron. So you Ultron. think Nick Fury will stay? Right, because it's only had one year in the world. Right. Uh, which means we have them for a whole, at least another year. Well, if they if this was two years ago, I'd be like, yeah, I'm totally right. down with what you're saying. Right. But Age of Ultron's official release date was six one two thousand, which makes it go bye bye. Right. But it wasn't legal for Worlds that year. Right. And then uh, it Nick needs Fury, to. I I, Nick, I can't Nick, do another year of IDs with drones. <laughs> yeah, Nick, I'm telling you, yeah. I can't do it. Nick, I don't blame you. Nick, <laughs> Nick Fury is it's eight twelve two thousand fifteen. Right. Which, if they <laughs> hold true to what they did with Guardians of the Galaxy, would make it go bye bye. Right. I, I don't know. Yeah. I mean, I'd like to see Nick Fury. I though. I think they're going to do the same thing they did last year. Right. I mean, I get Corey's point on it. Like, give it one was, more worlds and then poof, gone. I mean, but I can but, see that. Um. Nick Fury's really the one, though, where I... It's keeping things in check. It will it will be super interesting if Nick Fury sticks around, because then I will have a legitimate argument on which prime do I run. Right. Well, Nick Fury will be around. Uh, its release date was in uh, August. Right, which is the same as Guardians of the Galaxy. Right? Yeah. But, got retired but the, the whole reason That's I think true. that one of the reasons that went bye bye super is because, scroll. well, not necessarily Super Scroll, but I think that was a big reason, was the fact that that team base was across two sets right on the cusp of the rotation. So you had <coughs> yeah. half those chases on one set and half. I think that had a lot to deal yeah. with it. I mean, uh, yeah, and there's a good possibility of that too. The other thing that we all kind of noticed was. Um, especially after that Oregon State qualifier was. Oh, yeah. There was only one character left that could 
neutered the free actions of zombie super scroll. Right, and you couldn't leave a piece that was just so horribly. But you, you know, well, I guess Nick now is to the point where a lot of people are saying he's overpowered, blah blah blah. But people are really learning how to deal with him, build for him. Um, but he keeps yeah. some things in check. Just think about with no Nick Fury, what Jakeem Thunder, okay, and what Krang can now do. Right. Oh, Holy so, shit. Right. <laughs> I, especially on the um especially on the Jakeem aspect. I feel like that's why they released a piece like the Riddler mm -hmm. was to like try to keep it in check. Right. And I guess but it will come out what whatever not, comes out next for us. It's not it's not Peggy Carter. It's not Nick Fury, like... Well, I mean, people kind of said that about that Black Panther that got released in the starter set, that he kind of limited free actions and did that, and it, it nobody just, ever used it. Like It was just... He was too situational. Right. And even if... A lot like even, White Witch. <laughs> yeah. No, and even if you neutered him with... Uh, or you neutered Zombie Super Scroll, whoever else was on your team probably can right. get away with whatever they right. need to do. Which is crazy that with Jakeen, they didn't make those free actions. I mean, they said you had to do it at the beginning of your turn, but it's really weird. It's like... It just occurs. Yeah, it occurs. That's... I don't know. So, I mean, I don't think I feel like I should talk on the subject with Nick because he's probably one of my, one of my most favorite pieces. Right. Um, and I hope he sticks around just because it makes... Oh, man. <laughs> but... Blind justification. Yeah. Um, balance. It'll be interesting. Yeah, I don't... <clears throat> I... I don't know, dude. I could half of me thinks that they'll rotate it out just to keep with consistency, and the other half of me with Jakeem out makes me feel like they won't. So basically, I mean, so basically, it really comes down to is what they did last year. Is that the new standard for rotation, or was that the fluke year because of how the the team base right, was? And who knows? And I it's WizKids. Yeah, it's, <laughs> it's WizKids. Who right. really knows? Right. Everything's going to get retired up to Joker's Wild as soon as X Force comes out. And we're, all we're going to get to play could, is X Force. Could you imagine if they did something like does it? Doesn't Magic do that? Like only the most recent like four sets or whatever yeah, are modern. It's, yeah, it's like blocks. Yeah. yeah oh yeah. my god. And their suck. their rotation period is like eighteen months or something. So it's weird. Yeah. Yeah. I was talking to one of the guys down at our local shop about it. And I'm like, well, I'm glad I don't play Magic. Right. Uh, yeah, that's just, yeah. All your money. I don't, right? I that's mean, cause, just weird. Because I'll tell you this right now. Let's hypothetically, everything up to Nick Fury retires, I, the prime I run would be. It's the team 100% of the time, it's right? It's team, yeah. If I'm running because what are your line, options at that point? You're not front. Um, oh, no, if, if, if Nick it goes, goes away. away. Yeah, yeah, yeah. So if, you have yeah. the current one. So, okay, you'd have Casey Harlequin, which. She's awesome. She's decent, but there's no. a lot of decent attackers. Um, there. And then what are the other ones out of World's Finest? Uh, the Superman. Yeah, the Superman. Uh, yeah. Which is really bad. What was the... Oh, okay, and what was the common one? Poison Ivy. Poison, Poison Ivy, Ivy, which she had some situations. If you were stuff. making a crazy mind control team, hers would be decent. Right, but, but it's still not going to compare to no. what you can do with Jakeem. No. Um, some of the other ones, I mean, you got... Anti-Venom. Um, Anti-Venom, you got Emma Frost. Hydro Man. Hydro Man. Hydro is one... I like him, I just don't know. Master right. of Evil. Um, I, I could see a use for Emma Frost. Kitty Pride. Kitty Pride, Kitty definitely. Kitty Pride is one I would consider. She's actually, I've considered running her in my prime slot but, many a times already. But my thing is, is when I then compare it to, like, Jakeem, I'm like... Jakeem can neuter most of the problems that these other primes would bring up. Yeah. With with no threat of Nick, I know I agree. Yeah. Yeah. Nick is yeah, right. As we learned as we learned last Saturday. Because <laughs> I mean, don't get it wrong. Like if Nick Fury didn't retire, Nighthawk Prime is Still personally reliable. is like my number one prime pick. Right. And, and we'll actually get more into that um, Two episodes away, I believe we're going to talk about theme versus no theme. Right. Yeah. And really, Prime has a big, big effect on that. Right. Um, some of the other ones, I mean, you're not going to run Craven. Um, Anarchy, I'm really starting to see the viability of him. But soon after rotation and, and the turtle goes away to try and slow things down, he might be a little bit viable, but... You'd have... Yeah. I mean, Anarchy is a very... I tried to build for a team with Anarchy, and I actually tried to do it with Theme, 
Mm-hmm. And I'm just like, if yeah, I built with the Anarchy, I would yeah. ditch the... It anarchy. would have um, the Fast Force, Jean Grey, a turtle, and I would right. be covering the map of moms like crazy. Right. And if there was no turtle right. anymore, I'd have a team of barrier. Right. Oh, would, yeah. For sure. Like, that KCGL on right. the lower point. Like, right. But... The I'm, KCGL on the lower You mean the JSA? Or... Or, or no, you want okay, yeah, no, KCGL does that barrier. Yeah. yeah. Well, I'll just think the new one also does a barrier. Well, I forgot one. there was. Yeah, there's the new JSA one. He's so. gonna run them both, right? I would. <laughs> um, um, Scott's for days, right? And that's that's a pretty good segue into uh, into one of the last things we wanted to talk about with this whole thing was uh, keywords that are arising. There's lots of justice society right now. Um, we thought KCs were kind of done, and they're proving us wrong on that one. Yeah, with uh, bat. Night. That that night, but yeah, for sixty points, yeah, that is kind so of bullshit. Disgusting. Yeah, <laughs> meh, meh, meh. Until oh, I roast man. his Quinjet <laughs> and rams through everything on his Quinjet, killing it and all his pieces. Well, it doesn't deal penetrating, correct? I think it's just printed, printed damage, but that's yeah. still like three damage. Right. Right. He's going to cause a lot of damage I and die. And it's yeah. going to be worth it. <laughs> Because I call in someone to energy explosion your team right after I did a ram. And it's only for races. every hit character, correct? Yeah. On the ram? Yeah. yeah. But still, regardless, okay, and this is what I was bringing up, regardless of special powers on there with that, right. just some of his stats for a 60-point oh, character goodness. is well, freaking ridiculous. Well, and, and like, yeah. <laughs> and like, we kind of started with it, too, was I thought they were done bringing out KC pieces right. for LEs. Yeah. Like, or, or in general. Or con exclusives or whatever yeah. the hell it is. Like, yeah. I mean, but, like, we were talking before the recording, like, I UFOs hasn't been around since Web of Spider-Man. What was yeah. the one you brought up, Corey? Modox 11. Yeah. yeah. <laughs> like, like, I'm surprised they haven't been bringing some of that stuff back. It's know? just the way they work, though. They drop off keywords. They're like, ooh, we have half a finished team. Let's right. move on to something else. Right. right. Well, it's like Great Lakes Avengers. Yeah. Like, you could never make a viable modern team. Alpha Flight. Oh, Alpha Flight. As, yeah. uh, Hammer, Hammer, Industries. Hammer Industries, yeah. Like, Stark Industries is another one that kind of hangs around, and you see it on a few you things. You see it with, like, uh, uh, Avengers, like, starters or starter yeah. sets a lot. Yeah. There's always this random character that's Stark Industries, and I'm like, huh. Right. Um, one, one thing I'm really curious about, because... I mean, two years ago, if they would have brought out TMNT, it probably would have been an indie set. You know? Yeah. Um, they decided to make it go with modern. Are they going to do more of that? And do we think, I mean, would it be successful? Or like that generic gravity feed that's right. coming out. I'd like to see generic vehicles, generic monsters coming. I mean. I love monsters. God, I wish Disney would just team up with them because. Well, yeah. <laughs> think about, like. How well would Star Wars clicks do? Stuff like that. Right. When Darth Vader um, uses Force Lightning, he's he, the explosion of pin size. But, I mean, the, the, the monster one is the one I'm curious where it's right. going to fall. Yeah. Like, I really hope so. And what they said last year at a um, at the conference, I think, I think it was the Gamma conference, they had a uh, an interview with Scott D'Agostino, which is a, the lead designer. Uh, they said anything indie they release from now on, it should be modern. Oh, that's going to be good. Yeah, good. Because, it, because what it did is they drove down sales of... Oh, yeah. That, why buy them? Why buy them if they're not modern? Right. right. Bioshock so, was absolutely wonderful. I absolutely love that well, set. And it just collected dust because I couldn't use it. Yeah. Well, and that's like uh, down in our shop one day, me and Dre, we were just down there uh, playtesting teams and whatnot. And there's a partial gravity feed of like one of the Lord of the Rings sets. And I and the shop owner just says, "Hey, you buy it all. I'll give it to you for blah blah blah." And I did, and we played with the characters that came out of it, and it was pretty fun. But he couldn't move the product because the only people he could move it to were people that were Lord of the Rings fans and into Hero Clicks, and there isn't a whole bunch right. of them. And and the biggest thing about that is there was really only one person, and the rest of us were all. Um, just modern tournament, you know, right. meta players. And you're not going to buy it. No. It's not going to buy it. Well, right. And that's like the Mage Knight is still down there, too. Right. And I'm just like, and I'll 
try and end up buying it out. Just, and the only reason I even did was because down at the Majestics Regional, when they did their 3v3, yep. the third group was indie. Yeah. And I was like, I'd like to know a little bit more about these pieces. Right. In case I ever took oh, a short man. stick and had to do indie. Dude, remember when my nephew used to run the Gears of War one with those Dude. damn grenades? Holy shit, yeah, I'm just going to throw this, and it's energy explosion from this square, five squares out, three damage each, no big fucking deal. <laughs> nah, let me see that card. Fuck! And then you're like, going, <laughs> then you're going through the rule book, and you're like, grenade symbol, grenade symbol. <laughs> well, grenade pool? There's a pool of grenades? Like, right. like it's not even one grenade per character? Yeah, you get a grenade pool? Like, give me a break. So speaking of things we wish we'd bring, they'd bring back, it's on the PAC. Why haven't we seen any characters with grenades? Right? Yeah. Especially, like, Anarchy would have been one that should have had grenades. Like, yeah. Oh, I agree. <laughs> like That would have been pretty gra- wicked. Granted, I'm glad um, they're I haven't seen any epic action crap. Right. But that was only Lord of the Rings. Yeah, yeah. and that was, that was so weird. Like, I mean, because up at OCC when we do games up there like you run a 600 point game and all of a sudden you're like oh crap there are epic actions right. you have some guy that ran two of the R wins or whatever that yeah. put out that smoke cloud with like penetrating damage and all that yeah. jazz Gross. although I will say if they uh, indie sets are going to start being modern thank goodness Star Trek is done because that would have sucked oh, <laughs> oh my bad I just brought in a board ship and I'm just going to kill you Oh, um, awesome. Yeah, yeah. It's 30 clicks, and there's full on all of right. them, and it's single target, even if I'm multi-target. It's yeah. Gross. Yeah, it would have been nasty. Um, actually, I was just thinking about it. I'm wondering if WizKids is going to start releasing bystander token packs, and if this next set of Con LEs is a, like a, a segue into that, see how well they do, how they like them, how they're, you know, in. Cheaper for them. Didn't, I if uh, I might be crazy, but I read somewhere and I can't remember which tournament format it is. But they're gonna start handing out bystander tokens. Like I can't. Huh. Right. I'll, I'll look too. like an OPs or not OPs, but like so uh, I, knew, I know. I know top eight. The Con Le's for the top eight are all bystanders. Yeah. Yeah. Corey, do you know what I'm talking about? Or yeah, no idea. Right. I, I, I will see. I think you're high. I wish. Um, <laughs> come on. Um, no, um, Aubrey, you you read something similar. It was yes. it's one of the Facebook mm. threads. Yeah, but I'm part of like a hundred different groups, so after we'll a while, look into maybe we'll look into that. We're recording two or three episodes tonight, so we might not have it on the next few times. But we'll uh, try and post it on Strike Horse Five, right? Uh, if we find it. Um, so we're going to talk about uh, for the last little part of this, uh, Matt. We're going to talk about friendly neighborhood. Um, why you'd want to choose that map. Um, there's no orange rules on it, so we don't have to discuss that, but, um, why you'd want to choose that map, for who, why, what you do if you wind up on that map. Um, I mean, obvious choices, I mean, I call it Nick's Playground for obvious yeah, reasons. Yeah, if you're running Dick Fury, I don't know how you don't pick that map. Right. You choose that map if you're Brian, because you're always playing. That's the only map I brought. <laughs> yeah. Why, well, there's no choice. Why go anywhere else? Crossfire Canyon, if you are not, okay, and we should, I, I don't want to interrupt our flow, but uh, I did want to bring up that um, at WKO's, guys, not limited for maps. I've noticed a lot of people only bring two or three maps, thinking they're limited. Bring all the damn maps you want for right. WKO, rock, and don't bring rock maps. <laughs> uh, reason I say that, or, happened at our last WKO, great, one or, guy brought one map. Or grid reality maps. Yeah, like. grid reality, not not okay for WKOs. Uh, understandable. We haven't had a lot of WKOs here. We're getting a flood of them, and there's only rocks. Um, I just wanted to throw that in there. If you guys have any questions about that, put them in the comments. We'll try and answer them again. But it's real important. You're not limited. Um, so bring as many maps as you want. Uh, with that said, back to the uh, neighborhood. Yeah. Um, yeah, there's really no point. There, you got what three chunks of four blocking, two one pieces in the middle. Oh, um, yeah. Yeah, I mean, there's no hiding. Like for example, like with the dual Coriander teams, that's a pretty solid map choice for right. it too. Uh, if you're flying in hypersonic, like or mm-hmm. ignore elevation for movement, like yeah, it is a fire. X. Uh, yeah. Well, I'm just talking about hypersonic. Oh, yeah. Um, 
yeah, if you're a hypersonic team that ignores that terrain for movement, like why would you not pick that map? Because okay. in one movement, you could potentially hit your target and then move behind cover where they cannot shoot you. Right. Um, it's a good map. Yeah. You know, like, um, like with Silver, like running a Banshee with it or a Rocket Raccoon, like those are some right. other solid characters. Um, well with it too. I mean, so what do you do if you <laughs> say you go up against a team that that's a good map and your team's not necessarily um, adjusted for it? What do you do? Um, if you're going against like Nick Fury, you try and utilize the blocking. Um, obviously, if they're running Nick right, they're going to have taxis. They're going to get to the middle of the map. There's not many places you can hide. You just got to rush them, guys. Yeah, I mean, really, at, at that at, really at that point is depending on what my build is. Hopefully, I have kind of a tie up piece. Right. I'd use that character to rush them, right. lock up Dick Fury or whoever they got. Yep. Try to keep them locked up so they at least have to move or choose to try to attack the guy right. that's next to you instead of maybe turning around and trying to attack your primary range attack. Yeah. Like. I mean, that's one idea behind right. it. And we will actually talk. I, I know that our next episode, we're going to talk a little bit about common core techniques where you should start if you're starting out building um, how to build and what you should plan for. And that's one of the things that you get a team that's good on that map and they got a plus six to theme, They're going. you're going to that map. You you might as well play for it. Have a plan, guys. Yeah. It's Nick, uh, I've been rushed a few times on that map and it, it's your best bet. You rush them. Um, if they're a fellow hypersoniker, you play the map just like you would anyone else. Right. Try and get, get them out in the open. Um, count squares, try and figure out what they're doing. Um, obviously, yeah, if you hypersoniker flight, you ignore elevated for any type of things, you want to choose that map. It's a good map. Um, it's out there. Anything else? I mean, really? What do you guys think about that map? Um. I've, I've only played on it a couple of times, and uh, I was not the one to pick the map, so you can imagine how that match went. Right. So, yeah. I mean, I, I yeah, that's, I, I think I went to that map a whole lot of times, and same thing every single time. Super uh, gross and super advantageous to the next player. Yep, right. you go right every up to the middle time. of the map, and you see the entire map. Yeah, I mean, um, even if you're not running a Nick Fury team, if you see a team that does it ignore a lot of elevated terrain for movement? Right, take them to that map. Take them to that map. Yep. Like, if you can lock them down pretty easily with that, right. you know, it's a pretty good idea to do it. Yeah, for sure. Uh, it's easy to control people on the map because you don't necessarily want to stand on the ladder, but you stand one away. They get locked up as soon as they come up that ladder. Right. It's a good way to control the map. Um, easily done without putting yourself at risk unless they're on one of the elevations shooting across. Utilize what little blocking there is. If you're right up on it, guys, the 45's out. They got to put their characters way out into that 45 degree um, to uh, damage you. Um, so utilize it yep. best you can. Uh, so I think that's that's pretty much it, right? We that's talked about that map. Know. We got that stuff. Anything else you guys want to bring up as far as stuff we wish? Any of that? All right. So, all right. I guess you guys will talk to us again next time. Um, hopefully, you guys like the new format. We're going to talk, like I said, about Common Core building, how we started building teams when we first started, um, what got us to where we're doing, um, and a good place to start so you can try and be competitive and start playing and have somewhere to start. So, all right. Until next time, guys. We'll talk to you later. Bye.